I'm Mark Edwards and welcome to Travelog. I've done my ridiculous beanie and uh, enough layers of thermals to make the Michelin man look like he's on a diet. And I've headed up to the northeasternmost major city in China. That's Harbin. Here, the weather averages out at about minus 14 degrees, which uh, feels about right for today. So uh, grab yourself a nice hot cup of tea and enjoy the trip around the ice city. I may seem somewhat red-faced and unhappy, but don't be fooled by first impressions. That's right, it's time to dust off those thermals, don those woolly hats, and slip on your coloured moon boots. Because you're heading to Harbin, where it's freezing, but fun. Harbin is a city that embraces its weather. Blessed or cursed, depending on your feelings, with one of the coldest climates in Asia, the city promotes its winter as its peak tourist season with considerable success as you'll see. It's also worth visiting in the summer, but you'll find Harbin filled with more visitors braving the minus 20 degrees Celsius weather and howling Siberian gales. Chinese New Year is the biggest and most important holiday on China's festive calendar. A time to be with your family eating good food and letting off countless fireworks. <laughs> so I'm lucky that I'm here during, uh, as we're approaching Chinese New Year and the entire city is going to put these people putting their ears back because I think there's some fireworks going to be going off. There we go, there we go, just go behind. And it's at this point of the year where you will find lots and lots of fireworks stands like the one we've got here where you can buy all sorts of fire, fireworks that can pack serious amounts of horsepower. There's also, the whole city is lit up with uh, ice lanterns. So it's, it's a cocktail of fireworks and lanterns. Enjoy. Chinese New Year, or Spring Festival as it's commonly known, takes on a slightly different look in Harbin. Certainly when you compare it to other places in China you'll still find the red lanterns, which are synonymous with any Chinese time of celebration. However, you will also be greeted by the sight of endless ice lanterns scattered all over the city. Everywhere you go, you'll be confronted by these wonderful ice designs that give the whole city an almost fairy tale like quality. Called the St. Petersburg of the Orient, Harbin is one of China's most beautiful cities. It's well known for its unique Russian and European influenced architecture, which helps give Harbin its distinctive character. You'll find architectural gems dotted all over the city, from Russian Orthodox churches to Buddhist temples. The Russian influence is perhaps the most visible thanks to Heilongjiang province's proximity to Russia. It's certainly an odd sensation to be walking around a Chinese city that has such an incredible Sino-European mix and atmosphere. Now, Harbin is an extremely special city. You'll find different types of European architecture here, and predominantly Russian, like you can see behind me. This is the must-see site, or one of the must-see sites in Harbin. It's the Cathedral of St. Sophia. Built in 1907, I'm going to take a lot of photographs. Let's go and have a look. I'm not the only one who thinks that going camera crazy here is a good idea. St. Sophia's Cathedral is one of Harbin's most photographed landmarks. It really is one of the most beautiful and interesting sites in the city. Set in its own square, it dominates this part of Harbin with its glorious dome. An idyllic setting for a wedding, perhaps. It would definitely be too cold for me. I might not be that keen on minus 20 degrees Celsius weddings, but feeding pigeons is always a bit of a laugh, wherever you are. In fact, if it wasn't for the imminent threat of frostbite, I could almost imagine I was in St. Mark's Square in Venice. Pigeons everywhere. Once inside, you'll be treated to what remains of the interior religious artifacts such as the beautiful frescoes above and around you in the centre of the room. The artefacts are still incredibly well preserved and clear for everyone to see. 
The Russian Orthodox Cathedral is also home to the Harbin Architecture and Art Centre. And in my case, it's a wonderful refuge from the chilly weather outside. Here you'll find an interesting photographic storyboard of Harbin's history. It's open from 8.30 in the morning and closes at 5 in the afternoon. Despite the majority of the captions being in Chinese, you can definitely get a feel of what the city used to look like from photographs dating all the way back to the 1900s. There are also additional photos available via touchscreen computers. This is not the only treat in store for you. Every day there are performances taking place in the cathedral and I was lucky enough to enjoy a sumptuous concert by the professional Chinese choir that performs here once a week. It was an experience in itself to listen to this mixed choir singing wonderful hymns in Chinese. All of the performances begin at 2pm and I would recommend coming here about then as you'll also be treated to the best type of lighting with which to enjoy the interior. That said, I did also get a chance to see the cathedral in the evening when the night light bathes St. Sophia's in a different yet still beautiful glow. Yeah, this was definitely one of the more relaxing afternoons I've had. I literally had to be dragged out of here, so reluctant was I to leave behind the warmth and also the magnificent songs. If you can drag yourself away, you can try seeing the Harbin Mosque or the Jila Temple as well. Right, time for some retail therapy. And in Harbin, there's no better place than on Zhongyang Dajie, the city's main shopping street, with a sublime mix of Chinese and Western shops. Built in 1898, the street is 1450 meters long and embraces all sorts of different types of architecture. You've got Baroque, Renaissance and modern day. The cobblestones that form the street were designed and laid in 1924 by a Russian engineer, with every stone costing one silver dollar. Thus, it became known as the Golden Street. Even back in the 1920s, the street was famous as a global shopper's heaven. Perfume from France, linen from India, furs from Russia and wool from the UK gave this street its fame. In some ways, Harbin is as much a cultural mecca as it is a recreational centre but it's certainly a good place to go shopping and explore the streets. There are also numerous fine restaurants and bars along Zhongyang Dajie, with a high percentage of them being Western or Russian. This is also a good area to pick up some Russian goods and souvenirs, as there are many shops that specialise in this. Right, well as they say, it's all about location when you're looking to invest in property and the French entrepreneurs who built the famous modern hotel got that bit right. So I've just strolled in from the Zhongyan street behind me, one of the more busiest streets in Harbin, which interestingly has a lot of uh, European architecture. And I've come here to the oldest hotel in the whole of Harbin. It was built in 1906, I've been told, and is a wonderful mix of uh, modernity, like its name suggests, it's called the Modern Hotel, and tradition. So we've got uh, antiquated artefacts here, you know, what the hotel used to have in 1920s, 19, 1913 here, and also just a very relaxing modern hotel. Situated right off Zhongyan Daojie, the name is a slight misnomer as the modern hotel was built in 1906 and remains Harbin's oldest hotel. It's an elegant building with an ice sculpture of a lion greeting you on your arrival. The hotel is bursting with character and has marble and carved woodwork decorating its public areas. The rooms are modern while still retaining an almost Baroque style. It's one of the many hotels that can be found in the city centre. If you're more into five-star chains, 
Then there's an impressive Shangri-La hotel, which overlooks the Jowlin and Stalin parks, making it the perfect place to stay during Harbin's famous Ice Lantern Festival. Anyway, I was starting to get a little peckish, and I'd already been informed of another thing the hotel was famous for, and that's food. I'm not just talking about the hotel restaurant, but its food court built on the side of the establishment. So I headed off to see what I could offer my growling stomach. So, having just stepped around from the modern hotel, I've been told that the food that they serve here is also very famous, and we're here in their sort of annex of the food uh, area. And as you can see, a lot of people here, they're famous for all the little eateries over there, so hot food, but especially for cakes, yogurt, ice cream, and I've been told ice lollipops. Let's go give those a go, they're over there. So, this is how it's done in Harbin. I mean, so even local Harbin people like grabbing some ice cream and just chilling out, quite literally, at minus 18 degrees, which is where we are right now. My hands are freezing, but the ice cream's great. Being a bit of a people watcher, I was intrigued to see a queue building up not far from where I was. I needed some answers. Harbin is very famous for its red sausage, which is sold across the country. People won't be deterred by large queues in a bid to secure themselves some of this particular Harbin speciality. As you'll find in any other of the major Chinese cities, Harbin offers a good balance of Western and Chinese food. Whatever your tastes, they should be catered for here, with a greater selection of Russian restaurants. Logically though, you can find more Northeastern specialities in terms of Chinese food. Give the dumplings here a go. They're perfect for warming up those frozen bellies. The city at night is a treat in itself. Thanks to the ice lanterns and ice sculptures, as well as the frosty weather, walking around after dark feels totally surreal. As though you're in some winter wonderland rather than a large city. I think this is certainly something that adds to Harbin's uniqueness. On a slightly different note, I couldn't help but feel a tiny bit emasculated by all the local Harbin people. I mean, there I was with my thermal underwear and enough layers to open my own clothes store. And I spot a local Harbin girl wearing a jumper and a thin jacket and no hat. They're still having so much fun. Having persuaded myself that my masculinity wasn't being brought into question, and I actually looked good with 12 layers on. I then heard a rumor about some people who were going to make me feel even worse. Could it be true? Swimming in the river with nothing but a bikini or speedo on. At this time of the year. So I headed straight for the eye of the storm, the Songhua River. Also known as the Sungari River in English, it is the largest tributary of Heilongjiang province's eponymous Heilong River. In winter, it's simply an enormous ice rink filled with fun activities to do. Caught up in the sort of peaceful environment that only this type of weather can create, it's not difficult to get involved. People of all ages were messing about on the ice. It's a magnificent haven of calm where you can ride sleighs pulled by dogs, go ice skating, or just live a little vicariously, trying not to end up in a heap every two minutes. Clearly, I've uh, put on the, 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 wrong, the wrong hat today. Uh, there seems to be a group of people having fun. Let's go and see uh, what they're doing. What do you do in Harbin on your day out? Hello! Hello! You come on? Fire! 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 I'll show you
，哎，来，啊，谢谢。这个手跟您贴。这边叫我，叫我，真的我。I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I've got the hat. I think I've got quite got the right gear. So uh, let's have a look. Hey, have a look at this guy. Have a look at this guy. So, uh, at least I think it, it manages to keep you uh, quite active. This is good. I mean, it's not too cold. This cat's great. Woo. So we're just uh, heading in to go and see the wonderful people who go swimming in uh, in minus 14 degrees. I. Uh, I can't, I can't really say I'm jealous, but uh, let's see whether they change my mind. I'm not going to lie, I was absolutely blown away by this part of the trip. I was dreading the fate of these swimmers, but then I wrongly thought they were swimming in a heated pool. But no, this was water direct from the Songhua River. The fact that I could barely feel my hands or toes just helped increase my amazement at this incredible feat. When I made some inquiries as to the dangers of this type of activity, the unanimous response was Hun Jenkan, which means it's very healthy. He's not cold. I am, I'm freezing, just watching them. Oh. <laughs> wow, 82 years old. She doesn't even seem cold. Well, That's right. 82 years of age. So fit and healthy. I think it's time to start taking cold showers in the morning when I head back to Beijing. So I finally arrived at the Harbin Ice and Snow World. There are three such ice festivals that go on here in Harbin, but it's the most important event in the city. They run every year for around six weeks in the winter. You, you just can't miss it. Come here for this. I'm going to go and get overly excited, I'm sure. Woo. and snow worlds you'll probably be surprised or you might not be but I was surprised to find that everything absolutely everything here is made from ice or snow we're talking right down to the steps the slides uh, everything that's on the outside so if you come over here we can see the ice look at this this is local ice, as I like to call it. I've been told it's made from the water that comes from the Songhua River, which is local to here. Now, the other thing is, I've really got to suggest that you, you wear a lot, a lot of clothes, because it's about four or five degrees colder here, a few kilometers outside of the city, than it is within the city. A lot of wind, put a lot, I've got like 12 layers on, but it's worth it. The park opens at 9 in the morning, and, but I suggest you arrive here around 3 o'clock and you can see the whole of the park during the day without the lights in all of its splendour. And I'm guessing it's probably, it's about 4.30 and that's when the lights, as you can see, are being turned on behind. So you get the best of both worlds. Check it out. Harbin's main winter attraction is without a doubt the spectacular ice and snow world. It attracts thousands of tourists from all over the world, as well as from all over China, and its fame is completely warranted. Somewhat compensating for the cruel winter weather, the park is transformed into a fairy tale landscape with magnificent sculptures made of ice. You can find entire buildings complete with slides, stairways, arches and bridges carved in incredible detail with chainsaws and picks. The festival can also be experienced in two very different ways. During the day when the sheer size and intricacies of the carvings are exemplified, and also at night 
when the sculptures are illuminated with coloured lights, turning the area into a temporary, psychedelic fantasy world. The festival lasts from January to mid-February, sometimes longer depending on the weather. There are figure skating shows, hockey tournaments and other winter events also taking place here. But as a normal tourist, you can also enjoy ripping around on the many slides which are custom built or cycling on the ice bikes provided. Take a horse-drawn carriage around the festival to give you that regal feel. There are also plenty of souvenir stands and food available on site. In all honesty, if you can take being a little cold, well, that's probably the understatement of the year, if you're up for a quick boxing match with nature, then Harbin's Ice Festival is worth the trip alone. My name's Mark, how are you doing? What are you doing in Harbin? I am uh, participating in uh, locomotive testing. Locomotive testing! How long have you been in Harbin for? One day. One day? How have you found it so far? Excellent. Really? The yeah, issue is very good. However, never fear if, like me, you feel you can probably only take the weather in short bursts. There are also several small snack restaurants and coffee shops where you can stave off the onset of frostbite. But if you're looking for a little more than just a place to warm up your toes, head over to the main building on the left of the festival. Here you can be entertained by a Russian dancing and singing troupe whilst you revive yourself with that hot cup of coffee. Close your eyes, listen to the music. You can almost be in Moscow. The night time does also provide a chance to bust into a few well-practiced dance moves as there is music accompanying you around the park. Don't forget to bring your camera as the Ice Festival is one of the most photogenic occasions I have ever been to. You may have been to one of the many Disney amusement parks scattered all over the world. Florida, Hong Kong, Paris, or even had the chance to witness their extremely successful show, Disney on Ice. Well, here in Harbin, you have something that adopts elements from both these attractions. It's Harbin's very own Disney Ice Festival. Since it's filled with all your favorite Disney characters, some would say it's more aimed at children, but there's definitely something for everyone from Aladdin's hilarious genie to a platform dedicated to Disney's hottest beauties, dominated by Ariel, of course. All of Disney's heroes have some part to play in making this park well worth a quick peek. One of the qualities of the Ice Festival is the sheer volume and diversity of the people who make the trip. It's an extremely popular attraction, despite the freezing cold. Some might say that it's almost because of the ridiculous temperatures that you can find so many groups and families in such high spirits. With its reputation growing every year, it's quickly becoming the place to visit in China during the winter months. And I'll definitely vouch for that. Wow, what an amazing winter wonderland. It's quite literally breathtaking, if you just excuse that terrible pun. Uh, I feel like I've just strolled around a fantasy uh, sort of fairy tale wonder of a park. But uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got left for today. I hope you've enjoyed the last half an hour and our trip around Harbin. But don't worry, there's still one more episode to go where we'll explore the rest of the ice city. Hope you're a lot warmer than I am right now. I'm going to go. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travel Log. On the next episode of Travel Log, we'll be double checking our life insurance as we literally drive among Siberian tigers at the Siberian Tiger Park. We'll see what kind of powder China's largest skiing resort has to offer. And we'll be popping into Harbin Polar World to say hello to some very romantic dolphins.